They spy meticulously tailed Akin back to Arula K and found her true identity to be the lost queen everyone is searching for. But before he could escape with this information, Arula K raised alarm and subsequently the spy gets beheaded by Akin while he tried to escape. All around, the son of Bashoro, who is betrothed to Princess Omowumi, is nothing like his father. He's more calm, a one lady's kind of man, which is just weak in his father's dictionary. He wouldn't even touch the prostitute which he sends him, which is just disappointing. Awala Rando believes he has found a lover and a friend in the princess, but that's his view because, in her view, he's just a friend that she really loves and could play the game of Ayo with. In the meantime, Olato Rira traveled to Oyo Town to seek a solution for Saru's problems. From her mom, who surprise surprise is our room, finding her daughter heavy with pregnancy without the knowledge of marriage caught her off guard. As they reacquainted and caught up on lost times, Awaru realized Saru wasn't dead and both her and her daughter have been involved with the same man. She would rather accept the possibility that their Saru were different and pending when they finish the ritual on her husband, Walato Rira will remain with her for a couple of days. That's if Saru even had a couple of days left. If the ghost don't get him, at the Greenwood, he arrived in the town and while he rested at Babaka Rui's Pan Wine Bar, he got to find out from him that Saru was in the town. And since everybody's finding out, Aworo's fears got real after finding out from Bashoru that Saru still lived and she promised to help him get more information about him from her daughter. Bashoru was smart enough not to reveal the truth why he was looking for Saru and since using people to his advantage is his specialty, he was going to use Aworo also. Adeegu in the meantime managed to track Saru and incapacitates him. Aworo found herself torn between three conflicting loyalties. On one hand, she felt a deep sense of loyalty to her daughter, Olatorira. On the other hand, she had made a promise to Saru to support him and give her blessings whenever he chooses a bride who wasn't her. Lastly, she struggled with her allegiance to her current lover. Despite her inner turmoil, Aworo managed to gather information about Saru's appearance from her daughter, confirming his identity. She attempted to persuade Olatorira to stay with her, but her efforts were in vain. Seeing no other option, Aworo decided to follow her daughter back to Saru, determined to protect her from him at all costs. This means she would need to stop working with Bashoro, but he refused to believe her when she lied that her daughter's husband was a different Saru. The king finally invited Arulake, who also changed her name and honored his invitation. He had agreed to her terms that he would speak to her in private and she wouldn't remove her veil, but when they met, he persuaded her to unveil herself at least for drinks which she did. He was disoriented at first but she calmed him. One of his queens spying on him couldn't contain her shock and flees to inform the other wives. Arolake went on with the real purpose of her visit. She debunked and blamed everything he must have heard about her on his other wives and since she was his favorite, he promised to help her get back to the palace. Meanwhile, Akiwu had always been suspicious of the visit, grew more jealous and leaves. When she later joined him in the guest house provided for them, he accused her of sleeping with the king. An argument ensued and she angrily asked him to leave. The next day, after getting over her anger and realizing he had left, she knew he had always been right and all the king wanted from her was sex. Instead of calling her back to the palace after, he sent one to her. She sent a message back to the king that he should come to her and while she left the town, Bashoro and the wives watched her leave before joining the king to discuss his next trip and the marriage of their children. This time, he asserts that he would bear the cause of the marriage and it must take place when he gets back, which the king agrees to effortlessly. His trip brings him to Alaturira, where he fruitlessly demands Saru from her and her mother. Meanwhile, in his absence, the king calls another meeting with the council of chiefs to discuss their conflict with the people of Ede. So, instead of raging war like Bashoro wanted, they decided to call the prince of Ede, Prince Karunga, for some peace talks. The talks proved to bring good results and while they celebrated, Karunga had his eyes on the princess and she was attracted to him too. He made his intentions known to the king and they immediately started the marriage preparations. While the king thinks he had resolved the problem with Akala, the prince gets another vision revealing Arulake to be the woman in the view. He relays this to his trusted friend Bashoru when he got back and informed him of the marriage of the princess to Karunga. Such news barely affected him, however, he soon took it hard. Bashoru, 
Being a master manipulator conceals his anger and supports the king's decision while harboring a deadly plan to ruin him. Meanwhile, Princess Omowomi tries to apologize to Awolara but he wouldn't see her. Basharun, using the information he got from the priest, tells the king to Arolake's place and the next day he went over just to let her know he knows. During the finalization of the marriage between Karunga and the princess, he enacted his next plan which is for Karunga to wrestle his soul for the princess's hand which Karunga agreed to. He knew his soul couldn't win the fight since Karunga is a deadly warrior. However, he provided him with charms to use during the fight but he refused to use the charm and honorably ran away like a coward. This was a disgrace not just to Bashoru but to Oyo Kingdom and the princess besieged Karunga to apologize to Awolara for embarrassing him but on getting there he couldn't because Bashoru was mocking Awolara. That night, the princess heard someone call her name but on checking, there was no one there. Unbeknownst to her, she crossed the charm known as Thunderbolt left by a witch. The next day, after the marriage ceremony, while they were about to consummate, the charm takes effect and kills Karunga. After his death, the princess couldn't eat nor drink. She just remained in the room with the ghost of Karunga which only her could see and it really terrified her. The priest owes the death to the king's disobedience for not performing the sacrifice and his deliberate hiding of Arolake. While the blames got around, the king did fail to mention Bashoro since he has the most motive. Meanwhile, the family of Prince Karunga heard of his death and came to confirm it. The chiefs knew this would only break war between them and lied that their custom required a consummation to last three days. In the meantime, Adegun brings Saru to Bashoru but instead of bringing Adegun like he promised, he takes the necklace off Saru's neck and then kills Adegun so Saru could resurrect him. But Saru claims he couldn't resurrect a person twice. Despite not possessing the powers of Akala, Bashoru boldly approached the king and declared that he could resurrect Karunga. He demanded Arolake's head as well as the continuation of the marriage between their children. How he does it, if he does it, didn't concern the king as long as the pending war between them and Ede is averted. Bashoru then arrests Arolake and joins her with Saru. Their reunion was filled with regrets and apologies for their wrong deeds towards each other. They questioned whether their relationship was ever meant to be, reflecting on the choices that had led them to this point. Since Saru claimed he couldn't resurrect a person twice, Bashoru takes him to Kuranga but he still couldn't resurrect him. Upon saying he couldn't get out of this one, the ghost decided to help him. One got into Kuranga and Saru commanded him to arise. Kuranga rose up but was a shell of a human that was just being piloted by the ghost in him and couldn't talk. That's good enough for Bashiru. He then takes the necklace from Saru and freed him like he promised after learning how to resurrect the dead. Meanwhile, everyone is astonished to see Kuranga alive. Even in his uncoordinated state, he was unresponsive to the calls of his wife, the king, even his brothers but rides home with them. On getting home, the ghost leaves his body and he dies again and the news quickly got around to the hearing of Awolara and he confronted his father for killing Kuranga through the witch and his failed attempt to resurrect him. The realization that he is in Jesus and he might end up being worthless pushed him to request the secret of Arolake's wealth promising to release her after. After she does, he refused to honor his words as he still has plans of killing her to get to the king. In the meantime, Awolara gets home and finds Princess Omowomi in his room and he just gladdens his heart to see his friend light up again as they play the game of Ayo together. The days followed with talks of Arolake's paid sacrifice to cleanse the land. The priest could only watch on because human sacrifice was never what the gods asked for. Bashoru was just doing this to get to the king. On this one, the priest disagreed with him. His son too refused to bear witness to the killing of an innocent person. Before he could carry out his wicked plans though, the brothers of Kuranga stepped in and murdered him. Arolake got arrested again but before she left the scene, she collected her paws from Bashoru's body. With their revenge on Bashoru accomplished, the brothers took their dead brother's wife, Princess Omowumi, with them and the king couldn't do anything, after all she belonged to them. Awolaran, who didn't want to have anything to do with his late father's choices, releases Arolake to Ake. Apparently, they had formed a friendship on his visit to the king and she was grateful to him for coming back for her. Before she finally elopes with Ake, she gets a farewell visit from Saru. This time, he had accepted date, tired of cheating it. He requests she finds his wife and help raise his child before leaving. 
but it turns out to be another vivid dream. However, she set out to do just as she was told. Meanwhile, in the afterlife, Bashirun let the ghost to Heaven's Gate since he now possessed Saru's necklace. This begs the question though, can he really get them across? Anyway, Arulake found Saru's family I guess to meet his son who is named after him. Is this Saru's reincarnation? If he isn't, where then is Saru the Anikulapu? And there you have it, a rebirthing journey through the twist and turns of Anikulapu, the rise of the spectra, from the mysterious powers of Akala to the intricate webs of deceit spawned by the characters. This tale has kept us on the edge of our seats as we reflect on the intricate plot lines and the complex motivations of each character. It's clear that Anikulapu is more than just a story about supernatural powers and political intrigue. It's a tale about the consequence of our actions, the power of redemption, and the importance of facing our past. From Saro's journey of self-discovery to Arulake's quest for independence and Bashiru's taste for power, each character's arc intertwines to create a captivating narrative that leaves us questioning the nature of our destiny and the true meaning of redemption. As we eagerly anticipate the next chapter in this gripping saga, let's remember the lessons learned from Anikula for the rise of the spectrum. That power comes with responsibility, redemption is possible in the darkest of times and ultimately, it's our choices that define our destinies. Thank you for joining us on this exhilarating journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thrilling recaps and analysis. Until next time, may your adventures be as captivating as the world of Anikulapo.